Hi there. I'm Jeff Stone, the Editor-in-Chief of CyberScoop. I'm happy to be joined by Mike Garrity, the Chief Information Security Officer for the State of New Jersey and the Director of New Jersey's Cybersecurity and Communications Integration Cell. Mike, there's been a lot thrown at CISOs in 2020. How has this year changed the CISO role? It's changed it completely. Sure. Um, and, and I say that from state government perspective, um, prior to the, the pandemic, we had a no work from home policy in, in New Jersey. Um, and then when the pandemic came, it was a you will work from home policy. Right. And so it turned, you know, the state of New Jersey inside out as far as, you know, how we provide IT services and, and security and how we're doing things. So in that respect, it, it's, it's been a lot different. Um, that being said, um, in, in cybersecurity, every day is, is a new crisis. So, you know, in, in other respects, it's the same. Workforces are so much more distributed now than they were months ago. What kind of concepts do you think help with that shift? Are we talking zero trust, multi-factor authentication, segmentation? You tell me. So all of those things. Um, and and. So a lot of buzzwords in there and, and in the sure. vendor community, they like to throw those buzzwords and say they've got they products do. that are, are, are going to do that for you. And, and they're really uh, mindsets as far as what zero trust is and, and you know, approaches to, to how to implement that. Not, not necessarily a technology, although multi-factor authentication is part of providing zero trust for an identity and identity proofing and those types of things. Um, but all of those things, as I said, we, we've turned our, our organizations inside out. We've got distributed users. Um, we've got distributed services. Not everything is behind the network perimeter. It's not internal anymore. Um, and in that regard, it's, it's not just providing that network perimeter security piece. It's, you know, your perimeter is now the user who's working from home on an untrusted network with a computer that has to be protected. You don't have all those layers of cybersecurity. So you've got to figure out in, in when we say zero trust is making sure not only is the person um, trusted, but also the device that they're using and the network that they're communicating on as well. So lots of aspects to that that um, have changed and and all of those things have become very important and have ramped up very quickly because of the pandemic and, and you know, the remote work aspects. Internet of Things technologies, 5G technologies are coming online throughout the US, which means uh, more tech is being brought in-house to handle those changes and updates. With all of that come supply chain concerns, I think. How should we collectively handle these concerns while trying to make sure that we don't fall behind? So risk management, who, who are you doing business with? And you know, uh, uh, let me take it away from the, the IoT part of that is um, we, um, we are very interconnected with all sorts of different vendors and, and the like that provide services or have access into our networks and, sure. and those types of things. We know that um, threat actors are targeting uh, managed service providers and vendors because instead of man uh, targeting an individual organization, if you hit at the supply chain level, you now get all their downstream customers in one fell swoop. Right. So those, you know, we have to understand that risk there and make sure that we're mitigating or at least managing it. So vendor due diligence, what controls do they have in place? How do you test things before they go on the network? All of those come into play with, with the supply chain. You mentioned IoT and all those devices, and that's really a big concern for us. Um, in New Jersey, the, the NJKIC and, and the cybersecurity function is organized under the Office of Homeland Security and Preparedness. And one reason for that is this convergence of the cyber and the physical. So, you know, doorbells and cameras and everything that's connected to the internet, you know, HVAC systems and the like. So we, we think of cybersecurity from an all threats, all hazards all the time. Um, you know, mindset rather than thinking of cybersecurity just being a function under IT security. When it comes to autonomous vehicles and smart cities, rarely is the CTO involved in, in securing those in, in most organizations, but we have to start thinking of cybersecurity outside of enterprise IT. 
as those threats that you just alluded to continue to grow and get more sophisticated, you know, organizations, I'm not sure about yours, but certainly others are facing a, a challenge in recruiting um, skilled cybersecurity professionals capable of protecting their systems against these threats. How do you close those gaps that exist in the nation's current security education and training landscape? Great question. A lot, lot of things being done here. Um, I know we have efforts in New Jersey as far as providing training. We're working with the universities and the school systems in New Jersey to, to help them build curriculums that are going to you know, produce um, cybersecurity professionals that have the right knowledge, skills, and abilities. At the federal level, the, there's the, the National Initi Initiative for Cyber Education, the, the NICE framework, if you will. Um, but a lot more can be done. I mentioned the convergence of cyber and physical. Well, the convergence of business and IT, um, you, know, it, it, I, you know, business is run by IT now. Um, and, and, you know, everybody's a software shop. You're providing services sure. online. Whether you're a bank or, or whether you're a technology company, you are, you know, part and parcel of a technology company. And so I think, you know, it's not just those cyber positions that need to be created. It's the education across the rest of the business and across the rest of the domains. So when we talk about all these, you know, coding, um, you know, programs for kids and, and your kids are learning how to code in kindergarten now and in grammar school and high school and so on and so forth, all these different clubs to teach kids how to code, we've got to build cybersecurity education into that for its secure coding and secure applications. We've got to build cybersecurity into the business programs in colleges and universities and an MBA degree so that you know, everybody has that awareness and everybody can apply cybersecurity, at least fundamentals across the risk environment for, for any organization. Mike, we covered a lot in a short amount of time. That's all I have for you. Thank you again for joining us uh, during Cyber Talks and we'll look forward to to uh, pestering you in the future. But until then, have a nice day. Thank you.